Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to render tracks in Reaper. Now, the concept of rendering tracks is to print or record the effects or plugins that are on those tracks and also capture any automation or volume levels that are on those tracks as well. And the main purpose of this is to create stems that are easier to work with or to save CPU processing with memory intensive plugins. So let's take a look at the track in front of us. There's a bunch of drum tracks here with a drum folder. There's a kick, snare, hi-hat and splash. We have some bass tracks, a few piano tracks, a pad, and another piano track. Now most of these tracks are MIDI, all of them except for the hi-hat track, which is actually an audio recording. And as you'll see, we can use any track type, MIDI, audio, even effects returns. So let's hear what this track sounds like. Now all the MIDI tracks are virtual instrument plugins. So that's gonna take up CPU processing. So if we wanna to commit to that processing, we could render some of these tracks. On the kick track, let's look at the effects. I'm using the context sample player to play that kick, and then I'm compressing it and EQing it. Let's hear it. So let's render this track as audio. Let's select it, go to the menus, and choose track. Go down here to render freeze tracks, and here's the section for rendering. We can render to mono, stereo, or multi-channel. Now I happen to know that this kick sound is mono, so I'm gonna choose this. And it's gonna render the tracks to a mono stem, and it's gonna mute the original track, so we don't hear both at the same time. Choose this, and it renders that track. We get this, a kick stem track that's now audio with all the processing that was on the original track committed or rendered, which sounds just like it did before. Before. But with this one, we're not using any CPU processing. There's no effects on here. And if we mute this one, no resources will be used on that track. Now when we're done with this, we probably wanna hide the track we're not using. So we'll go to view and choose the track manager. Then we can go to the original track, which is muted and just hide it. This way we're just seeing the rendered track and not the original. but it sounds the same. And if any point we wanna go back to the original, just delete this one, go back to the track manager, show it again, unmute it, and we're back to what we started with. So we can go through all the tracks and turn the MIDI or instrument tracks into audio. Now this will also work with effects returns. This track over here called Drum Verb, this is the reverb for our drums. All these drum tracks are being sent here, and then this track has a reverb on it. The Reaper reverb. So if we want to commit to that reverb and save the DSP and print the effect, we can render the reverb track. Just select it, and instead of going up here to our menu, we can just right click it. Go to Render Freeze Tracks and choose it here. Now the reverb is stereo. So we're gonna to choose to render it to a stereo stem track. It prints it and here's our rendered track. We can solo it. And all we hear is the reverb, but it's now printed as audio. So once again, we can hide this Go to the original track, which is already muted, so it's using no processing, and hide it from the track control panel and the mixer. 
So now we just see the printed track. And again, if you want to go back, just delete it and turn it back on over here. Now, another thing we could do with rendering tracks is combine multiple tracks to one track. In this case, we have all these drums. We have a folder up here. The folder contains all the drums. So we could just render this folder and have a stereo track or a stereo stem of all the drums. So we could select this, right click it, go to render, render tracks to stereo stem. It prints the track right here and mutes the originals. So now we have all the drums on one track right here. Saving a lot of processing from all these tracks, which we can now hide from here down to here, just hide them. And now we're dealing with less tracks because our drums are on one track. And again, we can go back just by deleting it and bring back the originals. So we always have the flexibility of going back to the original tracks. Now let's say I wanted to create one bass track. Now there's two right now, but there's no folder to combine them. So what we have to do is make one. Just go right here, insert a new track, name it, bass folder, turn it into a folder like this. Now this track is gonna play both of these tracks combined. So now if we render this track, it's going to create an audio track of these two bases with all the plugins printed, in addition to all the volume and panning information. Now I know that this base is mono, so I'm going to render it in mono. Runs through the whole project. Now we have one bass track playing both of these sounds combined. And again, the originals are muted. Now, another great use for rendering tracks is cutting vocals a lot more efficiently. Let's say we have a project with hundreds of tracks and the computer is starting to slow down. So to do them more efficiently, we'll start off by making a stem. So go to the top here, insert a new track, put it up here. And let's make this a folder for everything. We'll name it Instrumental. Now this track is a stereo mix of everything in the project. So if we render this track, it's gonna be one track of everything. We'll make it stereo. It renders the file. And here's the whole song. And because it's printed to one track, it's using almost no processing. So now we can hide the rest of the tracks like this. And just work with this one track. And we can add some vocal tracks. So now we can record our vocals right to the instrumental track. Let's say we record a bunch here, here here and here, and then we're done, we wanna go back and mix, just delete this one, go back to the track manager, and show all these tracks. And here's our track. And it sounds exactly the same, except we have control over all the individual tracks. So it's a great way of saving CPU and working more efficiently. So that's pretty much it. That's rendering tracks in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.